So I read the Beastars manga and I thought it sucked. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I don't want Louis pulling a gun to my head. Real talk though, Beastars manga, no exaggeration, is the best manga I read all of this year. To put it simply, this was me when reading the manga. Dad, let me ask you a question. What do they call that? A mustache? There was just too much heat in each page. I had to get up from my sofa every two chapters and was pacing back and forth like I'm OJ, waiting on them court case results. Legacy at one moment be chilling in the waiting room, and the next thing you know, he bitch slaps the devil out of a tiger. Legacy at one moment having a girl's trip with the boys downtown shopping and the next thing you know legacy gets teabagged by kung fu panda on steroids the high school is setting up for a cute school festival and the next scene louis pulls out a glock like it ain't nobody's business it's safe to say that b stars is a page turner which is kind of the reason why i read like 50 chapters in one day but apart from this amazing story progression hype building, and compelling characters, what really set the series apart was the immersion of these different themes that can only be replicated from anthropomorphic animal interactions. And that is exactly what I want to talk about today. I feel the genius of Beastars is that it doesn't try to mirror the real world. It is a story where the anthropomorphic traits are elevated and embedded directly into the story. The only benchmark we have is our basic biological understanding of each of these individual animals. The fascinating part of all of this is that with very different animal traits, boundaries that are familiar to our world such as schools, laws, government, cities, and ethics are set up around these animals. The true magic is seeing how these different animals cope with these boundaries despite still having their animal instincts. Instead of it being the wild wild west and all the herbivore characters getting cooked up like all you can eat Korean barbecue, animals are forced to suppress their instincts. So when we see a carnivore eating across a herbivore in a school cafeteria, or a tiger having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with a deer, you could only imagine the level of complex dialogue and themes that emerge from these diverse interactions. And the part that I really love is that the author takes things to the maximum by throwing in mature themes into the mix. Things such as drugs, cannibalism, slavery, and sex. This ain't your Zootopia, folks. The chapter that really gave me a wake up call was definitely the back alley chapter. The back alley is a black market where there's these rows after rows of dead animal carcasses meant to satisfy carnivores with their meat fix. And within this chapter, there was one herbivore who walked up to Legacy and the other carnivore students and with bearing his freshly severed off fingers, he said, would you like to eat the remainder of his fingers for some money? After that, the tiger Bill and some of the carnivores are like, sure, we'll chip in for one finger. And bro, when I read that, I was like, shit, this series is for real. But that goes into the first thing I definitely want to highlight, which is things don't seem what they look like on the surface. If we take this theme on a broader scale, let's look at the layout of Cherryton High School in relation to the outside world. Cherryton High School in some ways is meant to serve as a utopia for both carnivores and herbivores. It is meant to promote carnivore and herbivore co-prosperity, which is evident in school bulletins promoting this propaganda, and with all of the cross-species club and events. However, we learn very quickly that many of these things are a facade. Yeah, I'll help you set up at a school festival, but our dorms? Hide your kids, hide your wives, cause that should be separate. Yeah, I'll sit next to you at class, but walk alone with you at night? Hell nah, you must be out of your goddamn mind. There are just so many instances of these discrimination undertones that highlights a lot of the mistrust on both sides of the aisle. 
And when you leave Cherryton High School and go to places like the back alley, it's safe to say at a macro level, this idea of carnivore and herbivore coexistence is one shaky reality. Now on a more individual level, the next thing I want to talk about is masking, which could be literally applied to all of the main characters. Characters like Louie is a very good example of this. I feel like people of the audience dislikes Louie because they can sniff through the BS. He always tries to show himself in the light of a model student and always tries to show himself as knowing the right thing to say and a problem solver all the time. However, we quickly learn that this is not the case and our mans has a very extreme case of inferiority complex which kind of makes sense because he was raised as livestock number four. By the way, the conditions in that one livestock farm was so bad, I thought I was watching a Netflix documentary trying to convert me to become a vegetarian. And then all of a sudden, he gets adopted into probably one of the most affluent families in the B-Star universe. He thought that if he became the school's B-Star, he will be able to erase his past and no longer feel inferior towards carnivores or animals that are more physically stronger than him. But of course, we learned that route was not going to solve anything. Talking about Louis, I definitely also want to highlight the theme of stereotypes. In our world, stereotypes are usually linked with our skin colors or our apparent ethnic backgrounds. In Beastars, stereotypes, well, are linked to their animal traits. A clear example of this is Haru. Haru is a dwarf rabbit and with that came the stereotype of she is a small defenseless creature that must be protected and pitied. And from these labels, how you respond to them is where you form your identity. In Haru's case, well, <laughs> there's, there's no nice way to put it, she became a slut. And this was because she came to the realization that only during sex, she gets treated as an equal. And of course, we can't forget that yes, Haru made a conscious decision to be really sexual active, but it also makes sense biologically. Because rabbits are biologically designed to, well, fuck like rabbits. And thus, why rabbits are the universal symbol for procreation. And from this, I want to talk about masculinity. Again, because this is a high school setting, hormones are running rampant, a lot of the male students need to cope with their masculinity. And with all of these complex internal feelings, status quo, and stereotypes, what does it really mean to be a man? For some, it obviously means to bang every chick at school and be a quote-unquote alpha male. For others, like Louie, it means being always flawless in the spotlight and hiding all of her skeletons in the closet, such as having a secret relation with Haru. This story hones into our boy, Legacy. Legacy is labeled as your big bad wolf, and if you stare at him the wrong way, he's going to eat you up. He also had to cope with his constant cravings of wanting to eat meat. In response to all of this, Legacy decided to deal with all of this with isolation. I just don't want to deal with y'all, so I'm going to push all y'all away. He was okay with being hidden in the shadows, because in the tranquility, he could truly be himself. However, through the course of the story, Legacy is thrown into situations where he had to evolve as a man. His complex feelings for Haru, his carnivore friends pure pressuring him into eating meat, and dealing with adults that don't help the students in times of need. I feel that Legacy response to all of this is like him becoming Bruce Banner. He let his principles dictate his actions. No, I'm not going to eat meat because that's not going to help me in the long run. And no, I'm not going to just have sex with Haru because she offered at our first interaction. I'm going to be my own man and move as I please. But sometimes, I'm going to let my inner Hulk inner carnivore come out of me and bite out a zebra's butt cheeks out of her neck. I really think that Legacy is a man's man and with each passing chapter, I get emotional seeing how much he grows up. But that's all I have to say with the Beastars manga. It is such a compelling story with so many interlocking themes and conflicts and told in such a seamless manner. I'm not completely caught up yet, but once I do, I'll make a top 10 best manga moments. So please be on the lookout.
And also, if you can, like, share, and comment on this video. And if you don't, you will not get Legos egg sandwiches on Fridays.